It still amazes me how people talk to each other. They speak the same language but don't really understand each other. Or worse, misunderstand each other. My personal life seemed to be a series of such communication failures. Take my first marriage, for example. Helen and I had something special. After three years of marriage and four years together, we were a couple for life. That was until the day I opened my big mouth. We were having drinks with friends at a small pub a few blocks from our apartment. We were discussing marriage, exceptionalism, and what it meant to us. It was a topic that Helen and I had discussed many times. I know she would have been ready for an open marriage, but I wasn't cut out for it. Our friends seemed to share Helen's viewpoint as well, so I felt a little cornered, and my stance became more defensive than the friendly discussion warranted. We've discussed this before, Helen and I, and my opinion hasn't changed. There should be no nagging in a happy marriage. But what if sex with someone else means nothing? Not love, just sex, Marites asked a pretty but annoying, petite, gorgeous Latina, the kind I could fuck without love but with great pleasure. It may mean nothing to you, but what about your spouse? I replied. If it's important to him, it must be important to you, or you really aren't made for each other. What about sex, discreet sex, meaningful sex that makes your marriage even better? A lot of people I know have had a spike in their relationships when they have affairs, sex on the side, Marita's husband Mark asked. That's even worse, I almost shouted. All my friends and Helen were stunned by my outburst. Honesty is the foundation of marriage. If you can't be honest, it's time to give up on the relationship and move on. And if you can't, what are you left with? A cheating and lying spouse. That's what you're left with. I'll just say one thing. If you need to get naughty, get out of my sight, I stated emphatically. This explosion of emotion had two distinct results. First, he stopped talking at the table. We all left the place after a few minutes and went home. Second, two days later, all of Helen's belongings were gone and her wedding ring was lying on the kitchen table on top of a small note. Dear Peter, you're right. It's better to be honest with each other. I've met someone else and before I sleep with him, I'd better get out of here. I wish you a good life because you are a good man, just not my kind of man. Elena, that's the first example. Now let's move forward five years. I was married to Mary. She was everything I dreamed of. A pretty Catholic woman with sound principles about marriage. Everything was great, except maybe the sex. Hey, she was still a virgin at 22 when I made her my bride. A dream girl, I tell you, a dream girl. Except for the sex, that is. No sex before marriage. It's weird these days, but I was willing to go with the flow. Can you believe I had to beg her to have sex on our wedding night? And don't tell me about our honeymoon. I was really hoping that this honeymoon would replicate the celebration of my first honeymoon. Instead, we had many long walks hand in hand, lots of kissing and caressing. Back home, we settled for a while for sex once a month, then once every two months. I knew she didn't like to talk about sex. It's so dirty! But I had to let her know that an average of six acts a year wasn't enough. Come on, Peter! Don't say that. Sex isn't important. What's important is the love we share. There's no love in sex. It's just so animalistic. Well, I took her at her word. Sex wasn't important, so I'd get it elsewhere. I began a few weeks of intercourse with a co-worker at work, a petite brunette I'd met at a Christmas party. Truth be told, the first weekend we spent together, I had more sex than I'd had all last year with my wife. But something was wrong and that something was keeping me on edge. It all came to light one night in bed when my wife inquired why I wasn't asking for more sex. Honesty, do you know why my ex-wife left me for another man? And that's when my big mouth and remnants of morality took over? Ah, well, baby, E. Remember when you said that sex wasn't important? That our love for each other was the only thing that mattered? I asked. Yes, I remember saying that. Sex is overrated, of course, but I didn't mean that we should stop everything, she said, not really helping me. Well, if sex isn't important to you, I figured it wouldn't be a big deal if I did it somewhere else. I didn't have time to think. You mean you've had sex with other women outside of our marriage? She shouted. E, yes, it's no big deal, right? She jumped out of the house and drove away. 
Two hours later, Liam, Sean, and Connor, her three brothers, beat the shit out of me. They loved their little sister. And who knows, maybe they were evil bastards because they didn't have anything going for them either, family tradition and all that. A few months later, we divorced, Catholic or not. By the time I was 30, I was a more experienced man and wiser in dealing with women. And I met Nancy. We hit it off right away and our marriage was very comfortable and sexually active. When we lived together for 20 years, the early passion was gone, but it was replaced by close companionship and tender love between the couple. I am now 50 years old and Nancy is 48. I'd like to say that on the attractiveness scale, I'm an 8 and Nancy is a 9, but that would be a rough approximation. To be more accurate, let's describe us on a 200-point scale. I weigh 190 pounds and Nancy is 140 pounds. At 5 feet 11 inches and 5 feet 4 inches tall, respectively, we were constantly on a diet. But we still enjoyed evenings at restaurants, as our only child was in college. On one such evening, we had already finished our meal, no dessert, thank you, and were sipping wine. A boy from the bus stopped at our table to pick up dirty plates. Nancy looked appreciatively at the young man's firm buttocks. She said it, not me. To keep up, I too glanced over at the pretty waitress strolling across the floor. My goodness, Peter, look at us. Two old perverts drooling over young men and women, Nancy giggled. No, forget it. Have you looked at the dessert menu for tonight? I asked. Of course, replied Nancy, taking offense. And so have you. Well, as they say, just because I'm on a diet doesn't mean I can't look at the menu. That's the way it is with us. We're married, but there's nothing wrong with seeing who's there. Yes, that's true. I'll keep that in mind, Nancy said with a little thought. Over the next few weeks, Nancy started going to male striptease parties with her friends. I was a little discouraged by this, but after all, I did go to a striptease once in a while myself. But not every week. One evening I felt I should urge Nancy to tone it down a bit before her voyeurism got out of hand. Nancy. I don't mind if you go out with your girlfriends to watch male strip tees, but not so often. And never forget, look, but don't touch. One night I came home from bowling much earlier than usual. I wasn't feeling well. There was a noise coming from the bedroom. I ran to see what was going on. There was a nightmarish scene playing out. Nancy was lying on her back with her legs spread wide and a young man on top of her. I looked back at Nancy. She was obviously drunk. She was looking at me with a wide smile on her face. There you see, honey. I took your advice. I'm not touching him. I made him tie me up, and I haven't touched a single finger on that wonderfully firm young body. Me and my big mouth. But I put my old fingers on this young guy. Five, to be exact. All clenched into a fist. A bunch of times. And I threw him out of the house. Naked. I'm not one to finger a woman, but I didn't mind shaming her to the core. I left her tied to the bed. As I left the house, I called her father to ask him to come over and help my daughter. Me and my big mouth aren't going to ask a fourth woman to marry me, that's for sure. Although, there's this cute waitress at the Tonys. <laughs>